Okay, now we can look at relationships between some of these variables that we've talked about. So we can measure the pressure of a gas, the volume of a gas, the temperature of a gas, and we can also look at how many moles of gas are present. So the scientists that study this came up with some relationships because they noticed these patterns repeating themselves. So the first one we're going to look at is something called Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law looks at the relationship between pressure and volume. So if we look at pressure and volume, we find out that they are inversely proportional. So as one increases, the other decreases. And if we were to graph these, like you see on the side there, you would see a hyperbola. So the formula for Boyle's Law is P1V1 equals P2V2. So if we know the pressure and volume at under certain conditions, and then we know one of those variables under changed conditions, we can then calculate the other one. Okay, so we're going to do an example problem so you can kind of see how that works. So this says, consider a 1... 0.5 liter sample of gaseous freon at a pressure of 56 torr. If the pressure is changed 150 torr at constant temperature, what is the new volume of the gas? Okay, so when we do these gas law problems, because by the time we get to the end here, you're going to see there's a whole bunch of different variables that can show up. The best suggestion I have is to make a list of your variables as you come to them in the problem. So we know that liters is a volume measurement. So I'm going to say my first volume is 1.5 liters. The next variable I come to is tor, which we just found out is a pressure measurement. So pressure 1 equals 56 tor. Then it says if the pressure is changed, so now I have a new pressure, so that's my P2, and now it's 150, and I'm at constant temperature. Now the constant temperature part means if it's, that's not changing, then I don't need to worry about it when I'm doing my calculation. So my question then says, what is the new volume of the gas? So my V2 is what I'm looking for. So you can see from your variables here that your formula is going to be V1P1 equals V2P2, or P1V1 equals P2V2. So my first volume is 1.5 liters. My pressure is 56 torr. My new volume is what I'm solving for. And my second pressure is 150 torr. Okay, now the only thing you have to be careful of here is you have to make sure that your pressures are in the same units or your volume are the same units. They don't have to be in any particular unit, but they have to be the same on both sides of the equation. So if this problem had given me the first pressure in TOR and the second pressure in ATMs, then you would have to change one of those to the other. So now all I have to do here is algebraically solve for V2, so I have to get V2 all by itself. So I'm going to multiply Okay, so this is what the Okay, so this is what these problems will look like. It says we have a 1.5 liter sample of gaseous freon at a pressure of 56 torr. If the pressure is changed to 150 torr at constant temperature, what is the new volume of the gas? So whenever you do these gas law problems, because by the time we get to the end here, we're going to have a whole bunch of different variables that you could be looking at, I would go through and make a list of what they give me and what they're asking me to find. So my first one that I come to is a volume because it's in liters. So I'm going to put V1 equals 1.5 liters. The second piece of information they give me is a pressure, because we just learned that TOR is a pressure measurement. That's 56 TOR. And then it says the pressure has changed, so now I have a new pressure, so I'm going to label that P2. And it tells me it's constant temperature. So if the temperature is not changing, then that means that I don't need to worry about it in my equation. The question then says, what is my new volume? So V2 is what I'm trying to solve for. So then you can see from your list of variables which formula you need to use. So I know that I'm going to need my P1V1 equals P2V2. Okay, then I'm just going to substitute my variables in. So 56, 1.5, P2 is 150, and volume 2 is what I'm looking for. Okay, and then we have to get volume 2 by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by... 150, because I want this to go away. So I end up with V2 equaling 0.56 liters. Now the only thing you have to be careful of here is that the units are the same on both sides. So if they give me two pressure units, 
they both have to be the same. They don't have to be anything particular, they just have to be the same. So if one had been given in TOR and one had been given in ATMs, you would have to change one using those conversion factors we just looked at to make sure they were both the same. Okay, so now let's look at our next law. Our next law that we're going to look at is something called Charles' Law. Charles' Law looks at the relationship between temperature and volume. These two things are directly proportional. So what that means is as one increases, the other increases. And this graph would yield a straight line. So you can see a graph of some of these temperatures and volumes being graphed. So if you increase the temperature, then the volume increases. If you decrease the temperature, then the volume would decrease. And then you can see the formula here. The one thing you have to be careful of when temperature is involved in these gas laws is that temperature has to be in Kelvin. So if they give you the temperature in degrees Celsius, then you have to add 273 to get to Kelvin. So here's an example that uses Charles' Law. So for this one, it says we have a 2 liter sample of air. So just like last time, I'm going to make my list. So volume 1 is 2 liters. It's collected at 298K, so that's my temperature. And then it's cooled to 278, so now that's my second temperature. The pressure is held constant, so like we said last time, if it's constant, it does not need to be in our equation. So one ATM, it's going to be the same both times, so we don't need to worry about it. We want to know what is the volume, so what's our new volume, at our new temperature. So we're going to set this up as V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So I'm going to substitute in my values here. So V1 was 2, T1 was 298. Now like we just said, it has to be in Kelvin. Since this is already in Kelvin, then we don't need to worry about it. Then my V2 is what I'm solving for. And then I have 278 as my T2, also in Kelvin, so we don't need to worry about converting that. So when we do these, we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to multiply this and then divide by this to solve for my V2. Okay, so then my V2 ends up being 1.9 liters. So not a big difference, but a little bit of a difference between those two temperatures. So 1.9 liters. Okay, my third hypothesis, so this is not quite a law, but this we call this Avogadro's hypothesis. Avogadro's hypothesis looks at volumes and moles. So Avogadro's hypothesis says equal volumes of gas at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. So we say that the volume and the moles are directly proportional. So if you increase the number of moles, then you increase the volume. If you decrease the number of moles, then you decrease the volume. Okay, so here's an example problem of that. So we have two samples of nitrogen. Sample 1 has 1.5 moles. So N1 is my notation for moles, is 1.5, and it has a volume of 36.7 liters. Sample 2 has a volume, so that was my V1. V2 is 16.5 liters. I want to know the number of moles in N2, so I want to solve for N2. So I go back to my formula, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Now at this point, you can probably see why it's important to make that list of variables because you, can, you have potentially volume, pressure, temperature, and moles. So when you make your list, it's going to be very clear which one of these formulas we've looked at so far you would need. So you're only going to use the things that they mention in the problem or you're going to use the things that change. So volume, my first volume is 36.7 liters. My first number of moles is 1.5. My second volume is 16.5 liters, and N2 is what I'm looking for. Okay, so again, I'm cross-multiplying here. I'm solving for N2, which ends up being 0.67 moles. Okay, the other thing to notice here, these are pretty straightforward problems that we're practicing with where both of the volumes are given in liters. Things you have to watch out for is if one was given in liters and one was given in milliliters, for example, you would have to make sure that you change them so that they're the same unit. Okay, the last thing we want to look at is called the combined gas law. And if you notice, this is all of those laws we just talked about put together. So you see the P1V1 equals P2V2, which is our Boyle's law. 
you see v1 over t1 equals v2 over t2, which was Charles, and you see the v1 over n1 equals v2 over n2, that was our Avogadro's. So the combined gas law is really the only one of these you need to know, and then you just leave out anything that doesn't change or anything that's held constant. So this is all of them combined together. Now it's possible that you might use three of these, you might use four of these, it just depends on what kind of information is given and what they're changing and what they're asking you to find. Okay, so for this particular example, it says a balloon has a volume of five liters. Okay, so just like before, I'm gonna make a list, or I'm sorry, 50 liters at 25 degrees Celsius, so that's a temperature. We'll talk about that in a second. And 820 millimeters of mercury, so that's a pressure. We wanna know what volume will it occupy, so V2, what's the new volume? at 650 millimeters of mercury, so that's a second pressure, and 10 degrees Celsius, so T2 is 10 degrees Celsius, okay? So here we're using volume, temperature, and pressure. So we're not gonna use all of that combined gas law we just saw, we're just gonna use P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2, over T2. So since they didn't mention moles, we're going to assume that moles are constant, so we can just leave it out of the equation. The other thing we have to do here, before we can put these into the equation, is we have to take care of this Celsius issue here. So we can't leave those in Celsius. We have to add the 273, like we talked about before, to get it to Kelvin in the Kelvin scale. So this ends up being 298 Kelvin, and this one when we add the 273, ends up being 283 Kelvin. Okay, so now I'm gonna put those into my equation here. So pressure one is my 820 millimeters of mercury. And again, just checking both sides are millimeters of mercury, both sides are liters. Well, my final one will be in liters. Both of these are in Kelvin, so I don't have to do any conversions first. Volume one is 50 liters. Temperature one is 298K. My new pressure is my eight, or I'm sorry, my new pressure is down here, my 650. My new volume is what I'm solving for. My new temperature is 283K. So same deal as before, cross multiply, solve for V2, put it up here. V2 ends up being 59.9 liters.